People use clickbait titles because they work, but I can assure you that this isn't a clickbait title. So today we're going to talk about the coming food crisis, and then we're going to talk about how to profit from that, in particular a stock we're holding that directly benefits from the increase in food prices. So today's presentation is going to start by talking about a country called Sri Lanka. And this picture that you see here, I took that uh, when I was traveling in Haputale in the tea plantations up there on my way to Lipton's seat. So that's where Sir Thomas Lipton used to sit and there's a beautiful viewpoint there and he would overlook his tea empire. So Sri Lanka in the 1960s saw the government subsidizing fertilizer when that happened production tripled. So the use of fertilizer allows farmers to really produce yield. And people that push for organic don't realize just how effective fertilizers are. Well, they found out in Sri Lanka when they decided to ban fertilizer in 2021. And what happened is that rice production dropped by 30 to 40 percent. And because of seed and fertilizer scarcities today, they think that sh the crop yields could shrink by as much as an additional 50% this year. So it's creating some huge problems for the country. They recently defaulted on their debt, which makes it very difficult to purchase food from other countries. Inflation has now surpassed 50%, maybe even higher than that by now. And nine out of 10 Sri Lankan families are skipping meals. You can see here this article from Bloomberg that talks about how Sri Lankan farmers are abandoning their fields. Well, Sri Lanka is not the only place that's having problems. Across the pond, this picture was taken in 2019. So it's been circulating on the internet and Reuters debunked it saying that this isn't today, it's 2019. Well, does it really matter when it is? It's a very powerful picture and it shows the farmers in the Netherlands, which is the world's second largest agricultural exporter. Most people probably don't know that after the US, which is first. And the reason that they can produce so much yield is because they use technology and automation and, of course, fertilizer. Well, in 2019, the government proposed that they should have the amount of livestock that they're producing. So as a response, 2,200 farmers blocked 700 miles of roads because they believe that will decimate the farming industry. Well, three years later, the government proposes a 30 percent reduction and that protesting has resumed. So it's a big problem when the government starts making demands of farmers. And the other problem that's happening in Europe that I'm sure everybody's aware of is the fact that the world's largest and fifth largest exporters of wheat are trying to kill each other. So you can see here, Russia's the largest exporter there. And then this chart on the right is quite interesting. Russia also happens to be the leading country when it comes to exporting fertilizer. So there are some problems there. When you're at war, the priorities change. So there's certainly a big concern around the globe about the, well, the price of wheat has soared, but the supply of wheat not being sufficient enough to meet demands. And we're starting to see food insecurity as a result of that. So. There's protests in Albania, Kenya, Indonesia, Peru, Ecuador, Panama. You can read the names here. And there are probably more protests that uh, are happening out there as well. And people are protesting over the rising cost of food. And there's a very interesting statement made by this gentleman, Michael Yan. So he's a rather famous war reporter and a, a bit controversial, but uh, he said that when you have one of these things, war, famine, or pestilence, if you have one, the others will follow. Well, that's a big problem because we're seeing war, we're seeing famine, and we're also seeing pestilence. So the pandemic uh, just rocked the global economy and the market never really properly reacted to that. So today we're gonna talk about three food stocks we cover and how they might benefit from the food insecurity problem that's coming down the pipeline. So the first firm we're going to start out talking about is Beyond Meat. And we recently wrote about all the problems they're having. So the plant-based meat boom is now withering. It was a trend more than anything. 
and it's just not taking off as the pundits expected it to. So the McDonald's plant burger was a dud. The uh, Taco Bell initiative ended up in Taco Bell now developing their own meat substitute, but there's a bit of light at the end of the tunnel potentially because the price of meat has simply soared. The cheapest meat protein, which is probably chicken, is predicted to increase between 14 and 15% this year. That's according to the US uh, Department of uh, Statistics. So also beef prices are poised for a surge. They say that could last years. There are some major problems affecting cattle ranchers in the United States surrounding drought. So the question is, will price parity arrive faster for Beyond Meat? And we've always believed that this firm will never be able to truly scale and realize their value proposition unless they can compete on price because people are price sensitive, especially when you have a bear market and a recession. So it's going to depend on the price of peas because those are a key input to Beyond Meat's products. But certainly the fact that meat is soaring, especially if they start trimming 30% of the livestock in the Netherlands, then a Beyond Meat could start to become competitive, but that has a lot to do with the price of their inputs. And one company that helps them get those inputs is Archer Daniels Midland, ADM. So this is actually the second largest holding that we have. So we manage two equity portfolios. One is uh, 36 tech stocks and the other is 30 dividend growth stocks. Well, of those 66 stocks we're holding, the second largest weighting is Archer Daniels Midland. That's because this firm has performed very well. And you can see here how fast they've been growing revenues, both organically and through acquisition. This firm has been increasing dividends now for 47 years. Every year they give their investors a raise. That's pretty, pretty awesome. So this last quarter, their egg services and oil seeds division, which constitutes 60% of their profits last quarter, doubled profits year over year. And the demand for grain is driving up the prices of grain and that's translating into revenues and profits for Archer Daniels Midland. And they've specifically said that the crisis in Ukraine and Russia is benefiting their bottom line. So in the last earnings call, the CEO talked about how if Russia and Ukraine don't release their wheat stocks as usual, then there's going to be an availability issue for food. And that's a real problem. So this is a firm that uh, can act as some sort of a canary in the coal mine for investors who are trying to monitor what's happening with the food crisis. But this has been a excellent stock to own we've owned it for a very long time and it's particularly because they're a dividend growth champion and a champion has increased their dividend for at least 25 years now the third firm that we're going to talk about is agronomics and this little known publicly traded venture capital firm is traded in the uk we first covered them in april 2020 and they're up 159 percent since then compared to a nasdaq return of 39 percent so they've done quite well uh, since their inception in 2019 they've had a net asset value total return of 80 percent so net asset value simply is the value of all the investments that they've made plus their cash and that equals 15 uh, let's say pounds and 27 pence a share. Well, it actually trades at 17 pounds, 50 pence. So this is a publicly traded VC that trades at a premium. That's probably the first time that we've seen that happen. Most trade at a discount. So their net assets are currently around 150 million pounds and two thirds of that money is invested in 22 different com companies covering major categories like cellular agriculture, which they talk about in their most recent report, uh, specifically addressing the global food crisis and saying that they believe these firms will enable the um, 
enable the globe to recover from what's happening. Uh, and of course, they need to take cost into account, but they're investing heavily in cellular agriculture. And this is a way for investors to get exposure to private companies. Uh, unfortunately, it's quite small. So they have a 200 million US dollar market cap. We only invest at a billion dollars or higher. So we're gonna be actually removing this from our tech report. We're trying to clean that up a little bit and it's going to stay in our catalog as alike. So anybody who's looking for exposure to cellular agriculture and doesn't mind holding a publicly traded VC can take a look at this firm. Now, just to conclude, we don't invest in short-term trends. We don't think investors should do that either. So anything relating to the pandemic, we avoided because we don't want to invest in short-term trends. And eventually technology and the laws of economics will help resolve everything and everybody will get fed. Hopefully war, pandemic and famine won't exacerbate the problem. Now the world has experienced four global recessions over the past 70 years. The first one was in 1975. Ironically, that's when ADM first increased their dividend and they've been increasing it through the other three recessions you see here, global recessions in 1982, 1991 and 2009. So we've asked the question here, will 2023 be the fifth? Now I just wanted to finish this presentation off by uh, drawing your attention to this report and I'll put a link to this report along with some research pieces relating to this presentation. And this is a report that we put together several years back and I spent uh, several months in New Zealand meeting with and researching their dairy industry. And that was from an invitation, uh, a company called LIC, their CEO had uh, penned me a note one time on one of our research pieces and said, if you want to see how things really are, why don't you come down here and check us out? So I did. And I got to learn everything about the dairy industry. And this is a very interesting report that looks at some of the innovation that they have in New Zealand. And Michael Yan, that wartime reporter said, when he goes to a country, the first thing he does is go and talk to the farmers because they know what's going on. And I actually happen to be on a farm right now uh, doing irrigation for the past month. And the orchard that uh, we're operating is having some problems with the well. So I'm very close to farming. And I can tell you that the solution to this entire crisis is for people to listen to farmers. You wouldn't believe the amount of bureaucracy and the impediments that the government puts in place that disrupts farming. These are the people who are feeding the planet and they need to be listened to and their needs need to be prioritized. So uh, if you would, please put in the comment section any stocks that you're aware of, you think that are good ways to play food, just because that will be interesting to see what our readers think and make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation today.